Coming up this morning on Daybreak. A vigil was held at Vineyard Church for two-month-year-old Ezekiel after being killed by his mother in late April. Concerned citizens put on the event to not only mourn the passing of Ezekiel, but to educate the community on local programs that could help prevent things like this from happening in the future. I'm Ryan Berg here at Prickly Pear Ranch, where fourth graders from East Helena celebrate Lewis and Clark County Farm Bureau Ag Day. From MTN News, this is Daybreak. Good morning, everybody, and thank you for starting your Wednesday with us here at Daybreak. I'm Andy Curtis, and let's kick things off by taking a look at some of today's top stories. As a potential national debt default looms, we here at MTN recently talked with a financial advisor for some advice, who told us the best thing for individuals to do right now is to think about what their short, medium, and long-term investment goals are. Now, she also recommended looking at your portfolio and seeing how the past year impacted your figure to see if you're still on track to meet your financial goals. We have a lot more information about this story on our website, ktvh.com. And former President Donald Trump has been found liable for sexual abuse. A jury decided he must pay $5 million to writer E. Jean Carroll. Now, she says Trump raped her back in the 1990s. Jurors rejected that claim, but did find Trump liable for sexual abuse and defamation. He denies assaulting Carroll and plans to appeal the verdict. And in New York, Congressman George Santos could appear in court today to face federal charges. According to multiple reports, the charges were filed against him in a New York court and remain under seal. Now, Santos has admitted to lying about his job experience, education, and family background. Questions have also been raised about his finances. He has resisted calls to resign despite growing uh, pressure from lawmakers within his own party. All right, a little chillier start uh, than yesterday, but just by a degree or two across Montana. Still pretty comfortable, more or less, out there. 42 degrees in Helena right now. No wind whatsoever in the capital city, so uh, it feels like 42, which is a big plus. 36 in Great Falls, 45 up there in Haver, and about 39 in Cutbank at the moment. We'll get warmer today, but... Uh, not by a ton, well, 30 degrees, but uh, you know this won't be one of the very, very warm days that we have ahead of us here. And yeah, with that wind chill thrown in, feels like 29 in Great Falls, so a chilly start in the Electric City for sure. Feels like 39 in Helena. A few raindrops out there, mostly to uh, the east and hitting Haver, just lightly. We will get a brief break from uh, all of that action this afternoon, but we do have more storms in the forecast for tonight into Thursday. We'll take a look at that coming up in the full forecast, but uh, check this out. A high of 67 degrees expected today in Helena, 64 tomorrow, and then things start to turn around quite nicely. We jump up into the uh, comfortable part of the 70s, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday with plenty of sunshine. We'll take a look at that forecast coming up in just a little bit. And some East Helena students got a chance to taste the farm life on Tuesday. They learned about one of Montana's largest industries, all thanks to the Lewis and Clark Farm Bureau. MTN's Reinberg visited the Prickly Pear Ranch to see the impact that this kind of hands-on education has for our students. East Helena students experienced farm living and learned more about agriculture on Tuesday for the 6th Annual Lewis and Clark County Farm Bureau's Ag Day. The students rotated between more than a dozen different stations created by Prickly Pear Simmental Ranch to showcase agricultural life. They included lessons about livestock, farming techniques, soil health, erosion, and more. We feel like this is the least that we can do to try to help educate our young people as they come up and, and learn where their food is coming from. Um, learn, you know, skills that if down the road, maybe they want to grow, start growing their own food. They're learning about bees in here, they're learning about beef, swine, chickens, you name it. The event is put on by the Lewis and Clark Farming Bureau. Secretary Loretta Burnham said Ag Day could open doors to future careers and inspire youth to learn more about how their food gets from farm to table. East Helena student Corbin Vig branded his initials into a piece of wood at one station and told me it is exciting being on the ranch and interacting with all the animals. It's been really fun because like I got to do branding on a piece of wood and I got to brush a miniature horse. 
The local Ag Day is in its sixth year. Burnham says that it's been a great opportunity for the Farm Bureau and the students. It's, it's amazing, you know, how much out there there is to learn. And so unless you are fortunate enough to be, I mean, to grow up as a ranch kid, you're not going to know this stuff. So I think this is a huge opportunity and that's why we're doing it. Reporting in Helena Valley, Ryan Berg, MTN News. A vigil was held at Vineyard Church for two-month-year-old Ezekiel after being killed by his mother in late April. Concerned citizens put on the event to not only mourn the passing of Ezekiel, but to educate the community on local programs that could help prevent things like this from happening in the future. We will mourn for the lives you'll never touch, the accomplishments you'll never make. We feel the pain and the loss for his father and Ezekiel's family members. It's something that shouldn't have happened. We'd like to mourn Ezekiel's passing um, and share that there's respite, there's help, there's hope, um, and to pass on the word that it doesn't have to be this way. Wendy Marquar, a Great Falls community member who was affected by Ezekiel's tragic passing, was an organizer of the vigil. She believes that it's a lack of knowledge of services that perpetuate a negative cycle. A huge one is Toby's house. That's our crisis care nursery. It's free to six and under. I don't think people are asking for help when they really, really need it, and we could, we could do better as citizens, friends, family. We can do better. In a statement by Toby's House Director Susie Zeke, she said, in quote, Toby's House has been open since December of 2020, and we have served over 350 children. We are here to protect the children of Great Falls and support parents and guardians who need it, end quote. Candles were lit in a silent celebration of Ezekiel's young life, while family members of another tragic child passing spoke about their story of mourning. Not only did October die of abuse in this short period of time, but we had many little ones die in our community. I was the paternal grandmother of October. And uh, it's, so when things like this happen in our community, it just, it, it brings everything back and you kind of relive it. But Toby's house is a great place, but I wish more people wouldn't be afraid to use it. <laughs> If this vigil can save one child today, it was all very well worth putting together and having the community come together to spread the word. In Great Falls, Brianna Gino, MTN News. And still to come this morning here on Daybreak, as the threat of defaulting on the nation's debt looms, the path forward remains unclear. Much like our rainy weather forecast, we'll take a look at both when we come back. Welcome back everybody and thanks for sticking around with us to start your Wednesday and a chilly start up in Great Falls. A cloudy one too, a little bit and uh, borderline breezy, 10 miles per hour right now, knocking down that temperature to uh, a cool 30 degrees for that feels like temperature this morning. A little bit warmer down in Helena, but not by much, 36 degrees right now. That actually dropped down. It was in the 40s this morning at around uh, 2, 3 o'clock. We've dropped down quite a bit, 36 right now and uh, I'm guessing a big part of that is it's cleared up a little bit out there. Clouds tend to keep the heat in, especially here in the Helena Valley. Five miles per hour for that wind, feeling like it's just around freezing. And uh, not too far off across the state, 30s and low 40s, unless you're down here in West Yellowstone, 18 degrees right now. But with that wind chill, excuse me, it feels like 18 degrees in West Yellowstone. That feels a little bit warmer up there in Haverhill. 43 degrees. So no wind to start our Wednesday, which is great. Temperature's a little bit cooler, so we don't need any uh, extra obstacles this morning. So it being fairly calm across much of the state, that's, uh, that's a good sign. And it will stay that way as we head through the rest of today and bright and early tomorrow morning around 530. Still no wind for us. Different story out in eastern Montana, but you don't live there right now. I suspect if you're watching me on television, you're probably in this area and this area is looking pretty good from a wind standpoint for the next couple of days though it does pick up thursday night a little bit in haver but friday calms right back down what we will be seeing though 
is some more rain. Not so much this morning into this afternoon, a little bit down there in southwestern Montana in uh, southern Montana around Livingston and Bozeman. But as we head into five, six, seven o'clock, it starts to make its way up north and might just touch some of the Helena Valley. A few raindrops as we head into 730. Some storms out to the east that look to be uh, fairly intense, but small and brief. And as we head into late tonight, early tomorrow, that's when we will see the rain really hit the capital city and some thunderstorms. So don't be shocked if you're uh, woken up early tomorrow morning to a few rumbles of thunder around the capital city as that makes its way up north, hitting Great Falls later in the uh, morning, closer to the afternoon time. But all day Thursday, we can expect to see some rain at least, and with it, some thunderstorms. So a uh, rainy night and tomorrow ahead of most of us. But then the good news is that should be it for a little bit. This weekend, just in time for Mother's Day, this weekend is shaping up and looking very, very nice if I uh, can give you my professional opinion on the matter. 67 degrees today though, so uh, not too bad. You'll feel for, uh, fairly comfortable out there before that rain comes in 64 tomorrow. Remember rain all day, but Friday, Saturday and Sunday. High 60s, low 70s, no rain, almost no wind and plenty of sunshine. It's going to be a very nice Mother's Day statewide. Even up here in Great Falls, temperatures in the 60s and low 70s and sunny Saturday and Sunday. And as the threat of defaulting on the nation's debt looms, the path forward remains unclear. After President Biden's high stakes meeting with congressional leaders failed to produce a deal that would end the standoff. On the upside, though, the group did agree to meet again on Friday. NBC's Drew Petromo wraps it up from Washington. I'm sure that, uh, After an hour long meeting between the president and congressional leaders from both parties, there was what sounded like good news from the top Republican in the Senate. The United States is not going to default. It never has and it never will. But there was also a dose of reality from the Republican Speaker of the House. The House raised the debt ceiling. The Senate has not, and the president hadn't negotiated. So I find that very odd. According to Speaker McCarthy, no movement on the political stalemate that has Washington hurling toward an economic crisis. It's really a Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen says in the beginning of next month, the U.S. will run out of money to pay its debts. From our staffs, we're going to meet today and uh, daily between now and then. And everyone in the meeting understood the risk of default our economy would fall into a significant recession. But the solution to the impasse is unclear. Republicans demand spending cuts in return for their votes to raise the debt limit. Democrats want a clean bill to pay the nation's obligations while pushing budget talks off until later. We again repeat our plea to Speaker McCarthy, take default off the table and let's ne resume negotiations in the budget process in the appropriations process where we have legitimate differences. That the leaders say they'll reconvene on Friday to resume talks on the debt ceiling. In the meantime, their staffs will continue to meet, searching for a solution with time quickly running out. In Washington, Drew Petromo, NBC News. I'm John Mattery. Sure, flowers are nice, but many moms would love a trip to a salon or spa for Mother's Day. I'll show you some great gifts for treating mom coming up. From MTN News, you're watching Daybreak. Welcome back, everybody, and thank you for starting your Wednesday with us here at Daybreak. Now, if you're still deciding on what to give mom for Mother's Day this year, which again, here's your reminder, I'm going to do this every day, it's this Sunday, so don't forget. How about giving her a moment to relax, whether it's inside or outside the home this year? Consumer reporter John Matarese looks at ways to save on self-care gifts for mom so you don't waste your money. A spa day, a massage, a trip to the salon. Many moms would love one of these gifts for Mother's Day, and it doesn't have to break the bank. Busy mom Stephanie Kramer loves flowers, but says the best Mother's Day gift is a day at the salon. I would love to have my kids stay home with my husband and go get some pampering. It's something many of us don't think about, but a gift card to a salon or spa is always appreciated. Salon marketing director Kelly Hyde says a salon gift can be used for anything from a facial to a manicure to a massage in these soothing, relaxing rooms. It's giving mom a chance to have a little bit of time for herself 
time to kind of turn off her crazy busy mind for a little bit. Smart shopping expert Trey Bodge says self-care gift ideas are growing in popularity. People still need to be taken care of, and Mother's Day is a great time to offer that sort of gift to your mom. Trey says when booking spa or salon services, timing counts. You might save by booking a spa day during the week and not on a busy weekend. And that way you'll have that special time with her, but you won't be paying that special kind of holiday price. Or create the spa experience at home. Trey and Kelly suggest you gift some high quality products that mom can use at home. Everyone is in love with Moroccan oil. The scent of Moroccan is so luxurious. Then gift a subscription for a meditation app like Headspace or Calm. If what mom really wants is a mani or pedi, ask if her favorite salon offers a package deal. And check deal sites like Groupon, Spa Finder, and Coupon Cabin. Kelly says once mom uses that gift, she'll leave looking and feeling just so fabulous. It just um, puts a little pep in their step. And that way you don't waste your money. I'm John Matteris. All right, everybody taking a quick look here at the seven day forecast starting in Helena. Temperatures staying in the 60s with a good chance of some rain showers, maybe even a storm, isolated storm or two moving through tonight into tomorrow. But for the rest of our morning and afternoon, at least in the Helena area, things are looking pretty calm and uh, pretty dry. Storms coming through tonight. So you've got some time to get out and do anything you need to outside this afternoon. And uh, speaking of getting outside Friday, Saturday and Sunday, are looking great, at least as of right now. We'll know for sure uh, Friday morning, but uh, from what we're seeing right now, all of our state-of-the-art technology, that's showing us that Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, great temperatures in the 70s. No real rain in the forecast, calmer and plenty of sunshine. And then into next week, things heat up even more. We're pushing 80 degrees as we get into Monday. Up in Great Falls, a little rainier tonight, but a lot warmer this weekend pushing 70 degrees on Mother's Day. And it's a very special week for many Montana law enforcement officers as some are trading in their badges for bike helmets and their boots for running shoes. And it's all for a good cause. We'll be right back after this. From MTN News, you're watching Daybreak. Well, it's a very special week for many Montana law enforcement officers as some are trading in their badges for bike helmets and their boots for running shoes. And it's all for a good cause. MTN's Kelsey Marison has more from Forsyth on the festivities and traditions that surround the special Olympic Summer Games here in Montana. It's not often you see a group running and biking along a major interstate, but this is for a special cause. The Rosebud County Sheriff's Office is taking their turn carrying the torch to ignite the Special Olympics Summer Games flame. We get lots of honks going down the highway. Montana law enforcement officers are trading their uniforms in for jerseys as they run and bike the flame of hope across Montana. The guys really like doing stuff that's not work related, I guess you could say. The Law Enforcement Torch Run is an annual nationwide fundraiser benefiting the Special Olympics movement. And here in Montana, participants are making their way to Bozeman, where the state summer Special Olympics Games will be held from May 17th to 19th. It's hard getting used to semis buzzing by you and stuff, but, uh, but yeah, it's kind of cool because people, um, drive by and they honk and stuff and they recognize they know what we're doing. The Rosebud County Sheriff's Office is joined by Special Olympics gymnast Alana of Forsyth, who is eager for her shot at gold next week. Yeah. Very enthusiastic. She is very happy, gave us high fives. They're very good supporters whenever we do this and they met us at the interchange with homemade posters and stuff. And that support is appreciated by this Rosebud County team as they have a long road ahead. The hills were a little rough, but always when you go uphill, you're going to have some downhill. So something to look forward to. Something to look forward to with the games on the horizon. Yeah, there we go. An event that's about a whole lot more than just sports. They usually have me bike over the Heisham Hills, so that's a challenge and I enjoy that. So. So you're like the designated like uphill guy? <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically. <laughs> In Rosebud County, Kelsey Marison, MTN News.
coming up this morning on Daybreak. The annual VA 2K walk and roll event took place this Tuesday at the Fort Harrison VA Medical Center. Yeah, so VA 2K is an opportunity for us to not only promote the services we offer here at the VA for homelessness, but also to actually uh, obtain donations that are gonna go directly back to our homeless veterans. We'll have more on that, plus Governor Greg Gianforte will join us in studio to talk about how Montana is preparing for another wildfire season. From MTN News, this is Daybreak. Good morning, everybody, and thanks for sticking around here for the second half of Daybreak to start your Wednesday. I'm Andy Curtis, and let's take another look at some of today's top stories. Well, a hiker missing in Glacier National Park was found alive late Monday night and airlifted to safety. 19-year-old Matthew Reed of Dexter, Michigan was reported missing on Sunday after he did not return from a Friday hike on the Huckleberry Lookout Trail. Two Bear Air rescued Reed after picking up a thermal heat signature in a heavily forested area. Now, according to Glacier National Park, Reed slipped down a snow-covered part of the trail near the first saddle and fell into a drainage on the east side of the mountain. He lost his phone, water bottle, and shoes in that chest deep snow. Reed then realized he could not make it back to the trail, so he began walking down the drainage. When Two Bear Air found him, he was somewhat responsive, and they rescued him with a 175 foot hoist, and he was flown out of the park and transferred to an ambulance. And Senator Dianne Feinstein is back in Washington, D.C. this morning. The 89-year-old Democrat has been away for nearly three months due to health issues. Her absence has complicated the Democrats' ability to confirm federal judges, one of the few priorities they can accomplish in a divided Congress. The issue has prompted some progressives to urge Feinstein to resign. She has already announced that she will not seek re-election next year. And the debt ceiling debate may be entering a new chapter. President Joe Biden says he had a productive meeting yesterday with lawmakers when discussing the issue, but his version of events differed from House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, who said he did not see any progress in reaching a deal. President Biden is scheduled to meet with congressional leaders again on Friday to try to come up with a resolution. If they don't come up with something in the coming weeks, he says he'll consider invoking the 14th Amendment. All right, uh, chillier start across the state today. A lot of 30s on the map, a few low 40s without the wind chill. 42 in Helena right now, about uh, 36 there in uh, Great Falls. 45 up in Haver, so not too bad. 39 in Cut Bank, 34 in Lewistown. And if you're thinking that's cold, well, be happy you're uh, not down here in West Yellowstone. 19 degrees this morning without the wind chill. Let's toss that in there just to, uh, just to see, just for fun. 19 degrees still, so no wind really across the area. Knocking down the uh, Great Falls temperature though a little bit, 29 degrees in the Electric City, 28 in Lewistown. We do have a few rain showers popping up more out to the east, but uh, rain falling a little bit here in Haver. We should have a pretty clear morning and afternoon, really statewide, but specifically here at Helena and Great Falls. That will change though tonight into tomorrow. More storms heading our way once again. Wednesday night into Thursday, but Friday into the weekend, it's all worth it because we're looking very clear, very nice as we get into this Mother's Day weekend. We'll take a look at that full forecast, though, coming up in just a little bit. According to the Montana VA, the state saw a 56% increase in homeless veterans between 2021 and 2022. They did help more than 200 veterans, though, secure housing last year, but Housing challenges are expected to increase in the coming years due to a shortage of housing and rising home and rental costs. Helping unsheltered veterans, though, is one of the goals of the annual VA2K. MTN's Tom Buchanan visited Fort Harrison yesterday to learn more about the two-kilometer walk that promotes healthy lifestyles for veterans and collects donations for our unsheltered heroes. The annual VA 2K walk and roll event took place this Tuesday at the Fort Harrison VA Medical Center. Yeah, so VA 2K is an opportunity for us to not only promote the services we offer here at the VA for homelessness, but also to actually uh, obtain donations that are going to go directly back to our homeless veterans. The walk took place on the parade ground starting at 7.30 a.m., as well as a walk over at 10 Mile Creek Park at 10 a.m. 
In addition to the walk, a VA health fair took place in the main lobby, along with live music. This is the walk's 13th year of bringing awareness to unsheltered veterans, as well as encouraging folks to live active lifestyles. From 2021 to 2022, the state saw a 56% increase in homeless veterans. The event accepted donations such as money, food, and clothing. They also were accepting garden supplies for unsheltered veterans, who now live in one of the Fort Harrison VA's housing units. It is really important because it is so much harder for people now with um, the cost of housing. So we just have more unsheltered veterans and to take some time to recognize that and hopefully um, have that awareness so people might start to think about what can we really start to do about this. The crew from Fort Harrison VA's fire department decided to get in on the walk and spoke to me about the importance of supporting those who have served our country. They uh, serve their country, they've done a lot of time, perhaps overseas and in some um, hostile environments. Uh, so I think it's great to give back to where we can help care for them and uh, support them in, in emotional ways and physical ways, uh, financially perhaps. Other Montana VA resources to help veterans secure housing include job training, addiction and depression treatment, health and dental care, and more. Reporting in Helena, Tom Buchanan, MTN News. And Montana Attorney General Austin Knutson issued a warning to Montanans on Tuesday, which was Fentanyl Awareness Day, about the dangers and prevalence of the drug here in the state. According to numbers from the Montana Department of Justice released earlier this year, Fentanyl seizures by anti-drug task forces here in Montana have gone up nearly 10,000 percent since 2019. Between January and March of this year, the Montana Highway Patrol seized nearly 21,200 fentanyl pills and 1.73 ounces of fentanyl in powder form during traffic stops. Fentanyl overdose deaths are also on the rise. Preliminary numbers from the state crime lab show 74 overdose deaths involving fentanyl in 2022 compared to 49 in 2021. Knutson said Montanans should talk to friends and family about its dangers. And the federal government is funding a study to see how overdose prevention centers are impacting people. Those are the few facilities here in the U.S. where people can use illegal drugs under the supervision of staff who are trained to reverse overdoses. The nearly $6 million study is the first of its kind in the country and will be conducted over four years. Overdose prevention centers have struggled to gain widespread support due to concerns that they are enabling drug use. Part of the research in this study will focus on that. The government hopes it will provide a framework to help community leaders decide whether to establish their own facilities. State, federal, and local leaders said on Tuesday that they're all ready to respond as Montana's wildfire season gets underway. They delivered the annual fire season briefing to Governor Greg Gianforte, who again urged agencies to commit to, quote, aggressive attacks, putting resources into fighting fires early when it's safe to do so to try and keep them small. Montana DNRC says they've already filled about 80 percent of their seasonal firefighting positions and the U.S. Forest Service also reported they've had success in hiring. The agencies in attendance yesterday said cooperation will be key since fires don't follow jurisdictional boundaries. And with the fire season quickly approaching, leaders are also calling on the public to get ready. Really, we'd ask Montana citizens across the state um, to start preparing themselves. So May is Wildfire Awareness Month, and so we'd ask uh, homeowners and landowners um, to start taking a look at their property to ensure they're minimizing the vulnerability to wildfire risk um, that they may face at location. Now leaders are encouraging people to visit mtfireinfo.org to find out what you can do to prepare yourself and your family along with your home for a fire and to be ready in case of an evacuation. And with that, we are joined in studio this morning by Governor Greg Gianforte. Governor, thank you for making some time with us today. Andy, it's good to be with you. Now, I know it doesn't really feel like it right now because we have been getting a lot of rain, but we're never too far away from fire season and we're not too far removed from the 68th legislative session. So would you mind telling me a little bit about how you think you worked with lawmakers to set us up for what's hopefully a good fire season this summer? Well, we need to be prepared and uh, that's why we've increased resources there mm -hmm. 
And the state's really following a, a policy uh, of two primary strategies. One is aggressive attack on all fires. When you keep them smaller, they're easier to put out. And secondly, expanded uh, forest management. Mm -hmm. So in the legislature, we appropriated another $30 million for uh, wildfire fighting preparedness and also an additional $30 million to help with reducing fuel loads in the forest so we can get, uh, put an ounce of prevention there instead of fighting the fires all the time. And speaking of prevention, I know you've promoted several good uh, neighborhood authority projects here in Montana over the past couple of years, some of them very close to Helena. Uh, do you think that uh, that's actually setting us up for some success moving forward? Well, the good neighbor authority uh, capability was something I worked on when I was in Congress. This is one of the best tools we have in the box. It allows us to get out and do fuels uh, reduction across the landscape. Uh, we did a, a, a really a historic one last year up in the Kootenai. It was almost 100,000 acres mm -hmm. over 10 years. And we really need our federal partners to come to the table and work with us fully. We're getting good cooperation there, but there's more we can do. And that's why we brought all the concerned parties together uh, in the Capitol, uh, Forest Service, BLM, National Park Service, U.S. Wildlife Service, as well as state officials uh, to really uh, look at these good neighbor authority projects and get some more work done on the ground. Actually, speaking about uh, those resources and working with other agencies, I mean, how do you think we're set up for that? Interagency communication, uh, working with our federal partners, uh, how is the table set regarding all of that moving into the summer? Well, that's the real reason why we bring everybody together at the beginning of the season, so we can kind of bump fists and get ready uh, for collaboration. We've had good collaboration, particularly in fighting fires in past years, mm -hmm. uh, but we have to renew those relationships each year. And my point in this meeting was really to request from every one of the federal agencies that's involved in fighting fires alongside state and local officials is that we need to all adopt this aggressive attack on all the fires because we implemented that last year right. and 95 percent of the fires that under state management we kept to under 10 acres and that's why we had less smoke in the air last year mm -hmm. uh, and i we'd rather see our forests than breathe them every summer yeah. and that's why aggressive attack is so important and uh nobody is more important when it comes to aggressively attacking our wildfires than our wildland firefighters. And recently, uh, I believe last year, you increased pay, base pay for our wildland firefighters. Is that working recruiting new firefighters and retaining firefighters because we need people on the ground doing all the dirty work? Yeah, pay matters. And yeah. that's why we really took a historic step a year ago to increase that pay. It has helped with recruiting. Uh, we still have a few slots open that we're hiring for, as every industry does. Right. Uh, but we need to take care of these uh, firefighters and just uh, on behalf of the state of Montana, I want to say thank you. They put their lives on the line. It's dangerous work, uh, but essential if we're going to protect our communities and property and people. What do you think can be done to help retain firefighters that are already working here and bring some new guys and gals in to help us? Well, pay's important. Yeah. It's also recognition. We also have to make sure they have the equipment they need. That's why we allocated additional money in the budget. $30 million for wildland firefighting preparedness. Mm -hmm. uh, that should help as well. And I, I just want to add, Andy, that most fires we see in Montana are human caused. Mm -hmm. So just a shout out to all the people, you know, secure the chains on your trailers. If you could do fuel reduction around your homes, that's going to, it's really for your benefit, uh, protecting your property. Uh, and just be careful when you're out in the woods, particularly as it gets drier here through the summer. Well said, Governor. Appreciate your time and thank you for coming in. My pleasure. Thanks, Andy. And it's a sure sign of spring. Cherry trees on the east shore of Flathead Lake have reached full bloom, but it's happening a little earlier than usual thanks to some record-breaking heat last week. We'll take a look right after this. back everybody thanks for sticking around here to start your Wednesday and uh, it's a little bit of a chilly Wednesday at least the start to our Wednesday in Great Falls we're looking at 37 degrees right now that wind still about 10 miles per hour no real change there and uh, no real change here it feels like 30 degrees a crisp 30 degrees this morning in the electric city beautiful look at that Sun this might be the only time you can stare directly at the Sun when we're looking at the Montana internet sky cam here in Helena 36 degrees
pretty uh, close to clear skies out there, meaning it feels a little bit colder. A lot of that heat escaping when there's no cloud cover like there uh, was this morning, a little earlier this morning in the valley. So it feels like 32. Wind, just five miles per hour. So not uh, really even worth mentioning, but I like pointing that out because I hate strong wind. So when it's only five miles per hour, that's a good day for me. And uh, we're going to have a good day as far as that goes across uh, our portion of the state here today. Temperatures in the 30s and 40s, even with that wind chill, we're in the low 30s, uh, mid 40s out here, like Missoula, 46 degrees. And uh, that'll wake you up. 13 degrees is what it feels like in West Yellowstone this morning. So uh, count your blessings if you're up here in Haver, where it still feels like 43 degrees. Now that wind that I was just uh, complaining about, uh, we won't have really much of it across our area today. Lewistown over looking pretty calm as we move through our Wednesday, but uh, southeastern Montana, parts of Billings, yeah, that wind will be uh, noticeable for sure, picking up maybe 20 miles per hour at, uh, at its worst uh, today. As we move into tomorrow morning, things stay really calm, pick up a little bit up here around Haver uh, on uh, Thursday night, but that'll die back down in Friday morning, another very calm start. So if you hate the wind like me, we are going to count the next couple of days as a win against the wind because it's going to be very calm and that should carry right into the weekend. A dry start too. We got just a few scattered thunderstorms up here almost into Canada, mostly into Canada. But uh, as we get farther into this afternoon around five o'clock, well, here comes that rain and a few storms moving into our neck of the woods. Just a little bit heading close to towns in there as we get to 630. And uh, by tonight, tomorrow, and really all Thursday, we'll be seeing rain and some storms around the capital city around 3, 30, 4 o'clock tomorrow morning. Then they hover around here swirling and changing, but uh, not really going away as we move through Thursday into Friday morning. But the good news, and yes, I'm happy to report there is some good news at the end of this forecast as we head into Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Dry, warm, calm, beautiful weekend ahead of us. Before we get there though, temperature's not too bad. 67 degrees today, so warming up quite a bit from the uh, 30s that we're seeing right now in Helena. 63 tomorrow, but a wet 63. And then Friday, 71 degrees. Calm, dry, and warm. I really like driving that point home. And Saturday and Sunday, 69 degrees and 73 for your Mother's Day. And another sure sign of spring, cherry trees on the eastern shore of Flathead Lake have already reached full bloom. And it happened a little earlier than usual this year thanks to record-breaking heat last week. But some cooler weather, like we're seeing out there right now, are helping the orchards in bloom throughout this week. MTN's Sean Wells takes us to Finley Point. Every flower has to be touched by a bee or some pollinating insect. Without bees, there would be no Flathead Lake cherries come summer. Sunshine today is starting to feel better and so the bees can get back to work. Campbell Orchards owner Brian Campbell says two beehives per orchard are needed for full pollination, rented from outfits in Polson and R. Lee. Those bees were busy pollinating crops in different states before heading home to Montana. So California was running late and Washington's running late, so the bees just got here in the nick of time because we were going to be late and then all of a sudden we're early and so luckily we got some bees back here in time. Campbell says a record breaking heat in the first week of May led to an earlier than anticipated bloom. We went from uh, buds that were just starting to open to full bloom within or almost full bloom within a six days, five or six days. It really pushed things fast. I've never seen anything quite that fast. With cooler weather this past weekend, Campbell says orchards should remain in bloom throughout the week. Oh, we gained at least a week, week to 10 days. And so now our timing for the crop will be back to normal, which is late, late July. On Finley Point, Sean Wells, MTN News. And another sure sign of spring, more bear activity around Montana. And coming up next, we'll see this community in Red Lodge and how they're dealing with some more grizzly activity just on the outskirts of town. We'll be right back after this. From MTN News, you're watching Daybreak. Welcome back everybody and thanks for starting your Wednesday with us here at Daybreak, I'm Andy Curtis. And the sure signs of spring here in Montana, 
sun, light rain showers, some snow, colder temperatures, and of course, more bear activity. And this community surrounding Red Lodge right now is seeing a grizzly bear a little bit more than they're used to. MTN's Haley Monaco speaks with an expert to find out why. The Greeno Lake area remains closed Tuesday due to recent grizzly bear activity that's been reported. As they continue to monitor the activity, they plan to reopen in a week. Coming face to face with a grizzly in the wild would be a terrifying experience. All right, we gotta go. And that's exactly what happened to multiple Greeno Lake goers over the weekend, leading to a closure of the area. But Daniel McHugh with Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks says the grizzly was not necessarily being aggressive, but rather showing defensive behavior. It was approached by people. When they approached it, they didn't follow uh, some of the basic bear safety. Right there in between the trees. So this bear uh, in this case is, is definitely hanging out in the area and eating natural food, but is not showing any abnormal behavior. McHugh has been working closely with the Beartooth District to monitor the activity of the bear, which he says is normal behavior this time of year. In this scenario, the bear hasn't done anything to warrant any sort of trapping effort. So we're just kind of monitoring the situation. Uh, we kind of expect that the bear will move on. Pretty rare that we actually close an area. Um, we usually do signage and public information. Amy Haas, the Acting Forest Service District Ranger, says they received reports of grizzly sightings in the area Wednesday of last week, but it was the amount of attention being drawn to the area that caused the closure. Come Sunday, we had about 40, 40 vehicles out here. So with that, we, we thought the concentration of that with the bear um, that we should put a closure order in. While the area remains closed, McHugh says to always be aware and have bear spray as the bear population in Montana is growing. An MTN is told the Red Lodge area has already had at least one cabin broken into recently by bears. Grizzly bears are expanding their range throughout the state. Predator populations tend to not move up and down as much, um, but they do follow their, their food availability. So the more food there is, the more predators there, there are able to be on the landscape. Many reports of bear sightings in different areas. It just happens to be like in a concentrated area of high public recreation at this time. Near Red Lodge, Haley Monaco, MTN News. From MTN News, you're watching Daybreak. Hey, welcome back everybody and wrapping things up for you this Wednesday morning with one last look at some of today's top stories, starting with this one we've been following all week. A happy ending to this story, a hiker missing in Glacier National Park was found alive late Monday night and airlifted to safety. 19-year-old Matthew Reed of Dexter, Michigan was reported missing on Sunday after he did not return from a hike on the Huckleberry Lookout Trail. Two Bear Air rescued Reed after picking up a thermal heat signature in a heavily forested area. We've got more about this story up on our website, ktvh.com. And in the coming hours, we'll learn more about the state of inflation. The government will release the Consumer Index Report this morning, and it's expected to show that inflation remained high in April. Prices are projected to have jumped 5% over the last year, and if the project prediction holds, it would be the first time in nine months that prices did not decline. Gas, rent, and used cars are among things that might have gotten pricier over the last month. Well, how about some good news, I guess, following that story. Temperatures this weekend are looking just fantastic. We have some great weather ahead of us here for, for Mother's Day. Before that, though, we have to get uh, over a couple of days with more storms in the forecast. Temperatures, though, not too bad here in the Helena area. 67 for the expected high today. Thursday around 64 degrees and really a drier and calmer start and uh, afternoon here for us in the Helena area. But storms will be showing up tonight into tomorrow morning. Make sure you uh, tune in tonight at 5, 6 and 10. Curtis will have uh, great coverage, very accurate and up to date coverage on what you can expect with that. But as we get into Friday, this I can tell you for sure. That weather's turning around 70 degrees Friday, Saturday and Sunday, a lot drier, a lot calmer and a lot sunnier. Almost a perfect weekend to celebrate your mother for Mother's Day. So don't forget, Mother's Day is this Sunday. You still have time to get mom a gift. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you back here at five.